Why hello there midits and welcome to the first of a few, a few, I'm not gonna lie, it's not gonna be a lot, but it's a few, Spooktober specials where I will be playing horror games and horror themed stuff. For instance, in today's video, we're playing a browser game which is called My Father's Long Long Legs. Um, I think it's a really cool, like, um, story, and it also says, like, over here, note, parts of this game make use of sound effects, play with headphones for optimal experience. So, I'm kind of inclined to think that it's gonna have some scary moments, but we'll see. And let's, let's jump straight into it. My family lived on the southern edge of a certain midwestern industrial city in an old house. Old enough that its basement still had a dirt floor. I was not yet old enough to openly question a parent's behavior, but certainly old enough to recognize its oddness when my father began digging. I retain only a single clear memory of the time before the situation became alarming and my father forsook sunlight forever. I'm sitting at the bottom of the wooden stairs that led down to our basement. Ahead in the dimness stands my father, up to his waist in the hole. Still in his dark blue uniform from the factory, skin and fabric blackened by the hot breath of machinery and further smudged now by the damp earth. I watched father with the satisfaction of a child who sees in her parent a well of limitless capability. Upstairs, my mother called out that dinner is done. My father takes one last shovel of earth, turns it over the site of the excavation, and in a single incredible motion, crawls out of the hole simply by pressing the sole of his boot to the lip of the pit and moving his whole body upward, walking right past me, right up the stairs. He was always a tall, angular man, as the remaining pictures of him suggest, and to this day I can clearly conjure the marvelous image of my father's long, long legs. Sturding over me as he emerged from the hole, he was to spend years digging be beneath our house. Apart from him, there were three of us, my mother, my younger brother, and myself. And now see, here we have like a multiple choice of something that we can click, and I'm gonna go with my brother. I don't know if that actually affects anything, but I guess it does because it's like colored differently now, but we'll see. My brother was young enough when my father began digging that it seemed to him an in indifferent fact of life. It seemed obvious to me that something was wrong with our home. Its wrongness was screamed, I thought, by the chilly terseness with which our mother moved through it. I don't know what that word means, I'm sorry if I butchered it. Returning home from work in the late afternoon, serving meals and retiring to her bedroom. The wrongness was screamed, of course, by my father, who after losing his job as the factory spent nearly all day in the basement. Okay, emerging at irregular intervals to eat and use the toilet. This is to say nothing of the physical changes he underwent as time went on. The wrongness was screamed by my own actions. The heavy worry I felt that at any moment the fragile equilibrium of our home would be upset and my brother's friends would witness the terrifying truth of our family's situation. A situation I myself could not begin to articulate, with, but which I felt ashamedly that an outsider would. Of course my brother, young as he was, saw nothing wrong with inviting his friends to our home and even taking them down to the basement to see what he called after our father's example, I believe, the renovations. The friends never asked to return to the basement after my brother took them down there. Some of them quietly de deigned to never return to our house at all, or deigned to never return to our house at all. Much to my relief, though my brother was often disappointed. I recall only one instance when my brother was perhaps seven when one of his playmates made a scene. I believe my brother's friend came from a religious family, which may have been part of the problem, but that may also be something I recognize only due to my own biases. At any rate, 
Though his cosmology was different from my own, he at least shared some of my anxieties when he attempted to explain to my brother that our father's project in the basement was deeply unnatural. I emerged from the living room because down the hall I could hear crying. I knew that my brother had a friend over and so was prepared for the worst. The two boys stood outside the door to the basement which still stood open. My brother looked up as I approached at a loss as to how to comfort his weeping companion. You're going to hell, our visitor informed me after I managed to get him to look at me. That's where he's digging down to... Digging to down there, the child said, and looking from me to my brother, he's digging to hell, and you're all going with him. My brother did not invite as many classmates over after that day, and I don't believe he ever invited any of them down to see the renovations ever again. Are we really going to hell? He asked me one night, laying beside me in bed after a nightmare sent him to my room. I told him I did not know. But is that where dad is digging too? He asked. I told him there was no such place. Then why is dad digging? In the early days, when I sat on the stairs and watched him work, my father had given me dozens of flippant reasons for his project, seeking dinosaur bones. All of these excuses had lost currency by this point, of course, and when asked what he was doing, as my brother told me, his religious visitor had inquired, my father had other things to say. Now here I'm kind of curious, and I want to see what those other things are. This is not the real world my father would say, or something along these lines. What we think is the real world is just a layer of dirt caked around the true core of the universe. It's fucking insane. And what is dirt? Inert matter. Dead weight. The remains of those who came and went before us, content only to... content only to further press down upon creation with their waste. There was a time when human beings were giants walking upon a small earth. But now the earth has grown fat and hateful with our soil while we have grown small. Starting here, I'm scraping away this sediment, our coagulated filth, and returning us to our original glory. I assembled this manifesto from memory, from various iterations and variations father offered us over the years and certainly it was the sort of heresy that had offended my brother's erstwhile friend. Still, there were not satisfactory answers to us then, and would not be satisfactory for my brother as he huddled, fearing hell in my bed. But frankly, I had no other answer for him, and let the matter lapse into silence. Which is perhaps why, all those years later, he urged me to come with him back to our father's house. But I think our mother and I due to our own experiences, had fewer questions than he did. Let's, let's see what our mother has to say about this. There are many things about my mother I do not understand. She first found my father attractive, she admitted to me many years later because of how unusual he was. He had come to the Midwestern industrial town and secured a job at the same factory where my mother was working. Though a practical man, he read constantly and voraciously in subjects ranging from engine repair to philosophy, a habit instilled in him, he had claimed, by his own parents. This was all my father ever said of his family beyond us. Any further inquiry into the subject caused him to leave the room or bring up some other pressing issue. Mother once theorized that father had run away from home. Whatever his reasons for leaving his family behind, my father did not wait too long before beginning a new one. I was born only a few months after my parents were married. Within a few years, father made enough money that my mother could stay home and watch over me, and not too long after my brother. Then one night, when my brother was perhaps only a year old, father came home, pulled a brand new shovel from the back of his pickup truck, and descended into the basement where he began to dig. At first he told mother that he was preparing to put down a cement floor, suggesting a prelude to a full or partial renovation of the house. As a child, the movements of adults were still largely mysterious to me, or I do not know the specific circumstances under which mothers realized this motive was untrue. 
Nor do I know exactly what transpired when father told mother that they must go to the basement to discuss the matter closer to its source. For after the door shut behind them, my brother and I were left alone in the house. My brother cried most of the night while I lay in my own bed, pillows pressed to my ears. The next day, my mother reappeared, quietly prepared our meals and then locked herself in her bedroom shortly before father returned home and commenced digging once again. My father, for his part, stopped sleeping in the bedroom with her, instead taking to the basement a decision which coincided with the first signs of his terrible metamorphosis. The changes were slow but noticeable. Father began to grow paler, and by the time the factory closed and he could spend the whole day in the basement, he was as white as chalk. Perhaps it was this general evidence of wear, the change in skin tone, and his subsequent emaciation that made him look taller, as if his weight increased in proportion, oh, as if his height, sorry, increased in proportion to the depth of his project in the basement. Meanwhile, my mother put my brother into preschool and sent me to a latchkey program while she worked to support us, in what seemed a deliberate contrast to my father and grew somehow darker and smaller. My father dug un uninterrupted in the basement for at least a decade. Jesus Christ. And once I started high school, he did not even leave the basement to join us for dinner. So it was just the two brothers and, and the f then my mother left him. Damn, dude. Damn. Father was sufficiently enveloped in his life's task uh, that there was no need to replay the arguments from my childhood. Whatever desire he once had to keep us home with him had apparently fallen away, lost in the depths of that pit. On her own, mother seemed to physically decompress, to become less bowed. She spoke more, laughed more, she had more friends and lovers. We did not see my father at all after we left. So they leave as well. On the day we left, for good, he did not even come out of the basement, though by that point it was questionable how easily he could get through the doorway, so tall he had grown. It was not until many years later that my brother suggested we pay a return visit to our father's house. Of course, my experiences played a part in my eventual decision. A year or so before we left, my father was the last time I ventured Wait, what? A year or so before we left, my... Oh, we left my father. Was the last time I ventured down into the basement. My brother was out with friends, having reached the age when he finally realized the awkwardness that resulted from bringing visitors to our home, and mother had locked the door to her room and apparently gone to bed. Father was, of course, laboring in the basement, and I was doing homework in the living room while watching television. There came a knock at the door. The man on the porch was squat, but dressed neatly in a suit, coat and hat. A pair of very small spectacles was perched on the end of his nose, looking minuscule in comparison to his large round face. Hello young lady, he said to me in a labored voice, is your father home? Who are you? I asked. The man tipped his old fashioned hat back on his head, smiling with rubbery lips. You would have no reason to know me, of course, he said, but I am your uncle. I left the man on the porch, the door locked, while I went to seek my mother's help. Thus, I discovered she was unresponsive, and she often was in those days. This left me with only the option to summon my father from the basement. He did not respond when I opened the door and yelled down, though I thought I could hear, faintly, the sound of his digging. I looked back at the front door where I could see through pebbled glass the rotund figure of the man who claimed to be my uncle, and descended the wooden stairs into the basement. The only light, as always, came from a single bulb hanging from the ceiling. My father had learned to operate in these conditions, but for me, the lack of illumination cast the labyrinth below into a mess of confusing and seemingly contradictory paths of damp black earth an only slightly blacker shadow. My father had first attempted to dig straight down, but as the years went on he elaborated his original plans, angling outward from the center of the basement at a depth of perhaps 15 feet. 
From there he had begun to hollow out the entirety of the basement with one long, looping path, treaded and bent around itself like some monstrous length of viscera, all the while continuing his march downward. I stood on the bottommost stair that, as I thought of it, still properly belonged to our house. By my feet was a stack of unfamiliar books. They were old, with blank but warped brown covers. Next to them was what appeared to be an antique child's rattle, caked with dirt and several rocks chipped into various unnatural but vaguely instrumental shapes. I turned to the void and called for my father. No response came, but I grew more certain that I could hear, however distantly, the sound of father's shovel. I called for him again, this time giving also my purpose for interrupting his work. There's a man at the door, I said. He says he's my uncle. I stood and waited, and as I did so, the sound of digging stopped. My father emerged a minute or so later, unfolding himself from the narrow bends of his maze, his pale his pale skin covered only by the rags of his clothing and everywhere dusted grey with soil, including, I noted, the corners of his mouth which seemed stained particularly thoroughly and much more darkly. Your uncle? Father rumbled, not quite asking a question, he then added, my brother. I nodded. Show him in, he ordered. The squat stranger, my uncle, who I remember smelled of sour milk, seemed elated at his prospects. I led him down the basement stairs, his agitation growing exponentially until he saw my father standing at his full height. It must have been at least eight or nine feet then, I think, Jesus Christ, at the entrance of his renovations. I knew to take my leave, and as I ascended the stairs, I heard the visitor remark that my father seemed to have done very well for himself, all things considered. I never again saw the man who claimed to be my uncle, either that day or any day after. Perhaps not coincidentally, this is also my last clear memory of my father, and the one that letter returned to me many years later when my brother suggested we return to our father's house. It seemed my brother wanted to put his mind at ease by checking up on our father, who had been left alone now for slightly longer than we had lived with him. On the one hand, I appreciated my brother's sentiment, even if I felt it was misplaced. On the other hand, I knew I could not stop him. His feelings toward father had always been more lenient. That's kind of how sons are with their fathers. The only question was, would I go along with him, or let him make the visit on his own? Hell yeah, we're going with him. We decided upon a day to visit our childhood home, where we as assumed our father still lived and decided to meet there one afternoon the following week. But there must have s but there must have somewhere been a miscommunication. That is a broken sentence. I was late. I must have been late. The alternative is that, for his own purposes, my brother arrived early to see our father before I did, and I do not wish to contemplate why that would be. The town was considerably less industrial than it had been, though the taste of industry still laced our water and air. The old neighborhood, not the most affluent even in former times, had fallen into further disrepair. The house up and down the block stood weathered and it seemed empty. The sidewalks buckled around thick protrusions of sickly weeds which reached out into the pothole street protruding fingers of the overgrown lawns. The only sign of habitation was a single car, my brother's car, parked outside our old home. So it's already like laying out the sort of image of it being like a ghost town, which really just adds up on top of it. And I really like uh, where this is going. If you dudes are enjoying this video, make sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this, by the way. Okay, so our brother's car. The doors were locked, the windows rolled up. A hand pressed to the hood told me it was not warm, but apart from that I had no way of guessing how long the vehicle had been there unattended. Ahead, the house waited. 
It seemed not much different from the rest of the buildings, scraped down to grey bones by the elements. The windows were gone without even slivers of glass remaining, and the porch had bowed and now held a stagnant pool of rainwater. The front door stood open at an angle, its lowermost hinge having rusted and snapped in two. Stepping carefully on the rotten porch, I slipped inside and found myself in the old living room. The floor was littered with trash and chunks of plaster dropped from the ceiling. The television was gone, though a lighter patch in the shredded wallpaper marked its former location. The couch had collapsed and now seemed covered with mounds of some sort of grey mold or fungus. Ahead was the central hallway of the house, and I could see the door to the basement had been woolly removed. Oh shit, it's like completely gone and stuff, damn dude. I called out my brother's name and then stood for a moment, looking down into unremitting darkness. Of course the power was out, it was probably disconnected long ago, but a flashlight lay on the floor just outside the basement entrance. My brother's? The flashlight seemed quite new. I flickered it on and pointed it down into the basement, but it penetrated far enough only to reveal the foot of the stairs. I called my brother's name again and waited. There was still no response. Assuming the basement was anything like uh, as I had last seen it, my brother could have easily gotten hurt if he went down without his flashlight. He might have been laying down there just beyond the stairs, unconscious. I had to make sure. Flashlight ready, I went into the basement. Ah, oh, this is so cool, so we're like using the flashlight to read now. Oh, dude, I bet there's going to be like a thing to, to just scare the shit out of me here. All right. The stairs creaked beneath my feet. I reached the bottom. And when my flashlight returned, only a slope heading deeper beneath the house. I knew my father had done quite a bit of work in the decades since we left. I went down. I called for my brother. I walked to the left. I walked to the right. I called for my brother. Let's let's do that first. Let's be smart here. Only my own breathing echoed back through those chambers of barren earth. I walked further into the darkness. I called for my brother again. I turned right. The musty smell of old earth filled my nostrils. I called for my brother again. Only my own breathing echoed back through these chambers of barren earth. God damn it. Holy shit. Um, I don't think calling for my brother is a good idea because I don't want to be jump scared by a fucking monster. So I guess I'm just going to quietly tiptoe my way towards the sound of the digging, okay? Around me there was nothing but darkness. I followed the sound of digging. God damn it. Was I going in circles? How would I even be able to tell? I followed the sound of digging. I took a downward sloping path to the left. I called my brother's name. I called my brother's name. In the distance, the sound of shoveling did not break its rhythm, as if the digger did not know or care I was there. I, went, I walked further into the darkness. I called for my brother again. I followed the sound of digging. I turned right. Okay, let's turn right. Was I going in circles? God damn it! I followed the sound of the digging. How long had I been down here? In the distance, the sound of shoveling... The digger. Okay, let's try that. Where was my brother? I followed the sound of digging, I went left. I walked further onward and received no answer. Followed the sound of digging. The pa further onward? I called for my... Is it getting... I think it's getting louder. Or like closer. Oh fuck that shit dude, I'm drinking some tea and then I'm getting scared by ghosts. Hell yeah. Mmm, some good shit. Okay. I followed the sound of digging. So ready. Take me. 
Take me away, demon! Be gone! Christo! Exorcisamus te! Omnisimundus spiritus! Omnis satanica potestas! Bitch, didn't expect me to know an exorcism in Latin, bitch! Dab! On them haters. Oh shit. I did not find my brother. I do not know what to tell our mother. I do not know where to go from here, what to do. It is true, I gave up my search. But once I saw what lived there, had been living there for all these years, or more precisely, what had grown there, I ran from the basement. Somehow, by my own luck, or by some other's design, I made it out of that darkness, though my brother has not. There is a chance, I think, that he may still be alive. My guilt is heavy, do not doubt that, but it is outweighed by the fear I experienced when I came face to face with that terrible result of father's attempted renovations of a rotten, rotted world. I once told my brother there is no such place as hell. I still believe that to be true, but wherever my little brother is now, I wonder if he's grown as tall as our father! My father's long, long legs. Whoo! Damn! So there's like zero jump scares in this whatsoever. But it's like so well written that it just keeps you on edge, you know? It just keeps you on edge and um, the fucking humming, dude. Oh, the fucking humming. But yeah, uh, mad props to, to all these people that worked on this. It's a really nice free browser game. Um, if you want to experience it for yourself without uh, me narrating and stuff like that, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Uh, hit that subscribe button and bell icon. And there's also a join button now, which you can hit if you have some extra money that you might want to throw my way. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me. There's also links to Twitter and my Discord server in the description. That's where the community is at. So go join that if you haven't yet. Yeah, that'll be that. Thanks a lot for watching, my dudes. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.